Welcome, Welcome to, to the, the Truth Bowl. Bowl. Hey, let's go ahead and get started on if you can go ahead and pass us that first question now. Okay. Let's see what we got. Oh, this is a really good one. Okay, can women be trusted with your man? I don't know, we're going to start with you. I think your friends are only as good, <clears throat> the company you keep, if you can, yes, I think, I think you should be able to trust the company you keep. If you don't know your friends, they should not be, you shouldn't keep them around, period, if they're That's not true. trustworthy. Okay. With okay. your man or anything else. Okay. Veronica? No, that is I agree. I think you should be able to. And I mean, if you trust them and you trust your mate, and I think you should be able to, and you confident, you know, okay. no problem. Okay, Jim. And I'm gonna say ditto to all of that because um, if you can't trust your friends and your mate together, whichever it is, then you don't need them in your life. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Now I have had an instance where I experienced a friend hitting on a, a date that I had, mm -hmm. and when it happened, you just know to compartmentalize that friend. It's just like, okay, they're my good times friend. I'll take him out to go dancing or whatever, mm -hmm. have fun with. And then when it comes to serious dating or bringing a man around, I'll choose yeah. to not bring them around that certain place. Yeah. Okay. So if you have to go through that, do you keep the person? I mean, I know you say you... An acquaintance. I believe being friendly with everyone or being... Um, yeah, I believe befriending everyone. I believe everyone should be your friend to a certain extent. Or let me say this, that you should keep persons... Um, his world in changes. your life, yeah, yeah. and their world, world, world changes. Because I genuinely believe that everybody, you can fit everyone in your life if yeah. you compartmentalize. Like, I have political friends that I go to to discuss politics. I have good times friends to go out with, mm -hmm. go hang out at the lounge, you know, have a drink, socialize, etc. I have people at church. You just have your different types of friends for different things. Yeah, I agree with yeah. you. But I can keep that person on an acquaintance level. I can be friendly. I had to see that person every day at work. So I was able to maintain that relationship because I needed to, to remain professional at work. Mm -hmm. And then I just know, okay, don't introduce that situation again. Okay, so the general consensus is women can be trusted with your man. You guys all yes. agree? I think so. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, well, let's go, and go to the next one. That was easy. Okay. Yeah. Anna, you want to pull the next question now? All right, here we go. That was, that was real simple. Yeah. Okay, another good question. Should women discuss their sex lives with other women? I think so. I think you can learn things from other women. Yeah. It depends on what women I wouldn't share with every woman around me, because I'll be very honest with you, I've tried to share with some women in my circle, and they're just uncomfortable with it. But you should have certain women in your circle that you can discuss those things with, because I think everybody has a curiosity or want to know, or you may share something, and they might be able to tell you if it's normal or not, or guide you in a better direction on how to handle the situation. Okay. Yeah, I think you, it's certain things you can discuss, and there's certain things you probably shouldn't discuss, but I think it's, you can discuss some things, you know, sexual related with, with friends, but I don't think you should just give it all out. But some things can be discussed. Okay. I'm ready. I'm ready. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on. I'm ready to answer that one because my thing, the way I see it is, I don't feel there's ever an issue with discussing who you are and what you are sexually yeah. because it's who you are. Yeah. You're who you are, you, you're, you're who you are, and mm -hmm. I am who I am. Right. My thing is, what we do is, we look at our sexual appetites the wrong way. We are all given uh, mental gifts and other talents and things like that. And some people are just more sexually interested, more sexually uh, creative, more sexually active. However, what I feel uh, in regards to the question is, is that I can freely discuss anything that occurs mm -hmm. with me sexually. Yeah. I don't have to say who the person is. I don't have to exactly. say who the detail is. Because the thing is this, if it's what my sexual preference is, right. it shouldn't offend you. Mm -hmm. Because what you do sexually is your business. Mm -hmm. Now, the insight that we get to share is you may be interested in something that I already do or know how to do, mm -hmm. and then and vice versa. That's so so we learn mm -hmm. from each other, yeah. exactly. Because the thing is, what you don't do, someone else will do. And my thing is this, is if it's you and your individual, if, you, if it's you and your man or you and your woman, what you guys do with each other enhances your relationship. And so anything you bring into the relationship makes it more exciting and it brings it more, it brings it new. So someone who's afraid to talk about things sexually needs to be exposed to someone who does some other things because you would be 
surprised yeah. at what you see and what you hear because guess what? It just may be something that you want to do or that you're interested in doing, just didn't know the person to get the information from. So I don't think that there's ever boundaries. I feel like if you're in a circle of individuals and they judge you based on your sexuality, mm -hmm. that's a situation too where you got to evaluate your friendships yeah. because we all bring something to the fold. So if I'm a little more freaky or a little more exciting or whatever in my sex life, don't judge me on that because yeah. I'm doing what it takes to do to please me yeah. and whoever I'm with. Okay. And if yeah. you're not at that level, then that's not an issue. But I should be free to share it just like I should be able to, to, to you know, you should be able to share what you're uh, experiencing, you know, as well. So. so should you only share your talents and gifts in the bedroom or is it okay to share what your man does? or how he makes you feel? I think it just basically depends on the situation. Let's say we're, um, because you know I'm a part of a girls group, and I think what enhances when we talk about relationships with them is the fact that we do have individuals who have had uh, issues with experiencing certain things or trying new things or even being afraid to introduce new things. However, we know when it's a man a man, if he, let's say, for instance, your guy comes to you with something that you've never experienced, mm -hmm. and then you put up that flag, that whoa. Well, nine times out of ten, if you're my girlfriend, and you're going to bring that up in a conversation. Mm -hmm. My thing is, first of all, you should have never thought that it was a wrong thing to do, because it's exactly. what your man wants to do. Because what if you bring something to him that, he doesn't that do he's it. never done, mm -hmm. you're going to want the same thing. And mm -hmm. as long as it's something that you guys are sharing, you guys are experiencing that together, and you're enhancing your own life in the bedroom and that's what it's about it's about pleasing each other mm -hmm. and so if if you have to bring in a what he does you know if it helps someone or vice versa then i say do it but only are, if it's if it's you know asked for or whatever but are you planning a bait going back to the question before about you trust your friend when you go in and you tell them what your man does in the bedroom that could make her curious sure. To do, you know, she could be curious, but you know what? But she, I trust my man. To try that on her man. Bingo. Yeah. Because I trust yeah. my man. Yeah, leave my man out of the equation. Well, the thing is, I just told you what he might be doing for me. Try it with yours. Right. Not, I'm not right. taking you for you to try it with right. mine. Right. I'm taking right. you so you go home and try right. it with yours right. because it worked for me, so it just might work right. for you. Right. And oh. I'm not having the conversation for the purpose of. You know, just to be telling you now, if you just asked me or whatever, this then another whatever, because I mean, otherwise it's off, it's an off limit situation. However, if we're together as girls and we're talking about, you know, I can just talk about an experience or maybe something just comes up, but don't be surprised if, if somebody brings up something and they say, oh, you did that? Yes, on a regular. Don't get it, you know, don't get it, don't be afraid by it. But trust me, just because a girl hears it and she, if she might feel that it's interesting with that question you were talking about with your guy. She may not be enough to keep up with what my guy wants. You understand what I'm saying? So as long as you're taking care of house, then you don't have to worry about the other person, period, point blank. But don't hold you back your experiences because it just may help somebody else. And I think nine yeah. times out of ten, it does help yeah. someone because I can say as a Latina, as a Catholic, when, young, when I was younger, I had a girlfriend that I could talk to about mm -hmm. sex and I would wonder or have certain questions and it felt very relieving to be able to have a okay uh, you know that friendship to mm -hmm. come to exactly to say hey i've been having this curiosity or wonder about this and she's like oh girl you got this and this is how you do it and does correct it. correct and yeah. so it helps you out if you don't feel like you can go to your mom because i don't have my i can't go to my mom with those type of questions because of her religious because, background because of her right. religious background yeah. she's yeah. a typical catholic good mexican mom yeah. and i would never discuss yeah. dating yeah. intimacy yeah. etc yeah with her because that's just not a venue, that's not a door we open. Yeah. And I don't think it even has to do with Catholics. I mean, I just think that old school yeah, is just certain things that we didn't talk about. Gap. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, you've got to still go back and look at it. You know, when there is a breakdown in the bedroom, in, in, in the home, then you've got to, you know, seek all avenues. You know, to keep it if, if it's what you want. So, yeah. Yeah. And going to your girlfriends, you should be able to go to them and talk about stuff like that. But then that. again, you have to know, know which you girlfriend. Are. And then so you, yeah, you, you, you know nine times out of ten which girlfriend. Yeah, you, you know who to talk to and who not yeah. to about certain things. So, um, are women talking about sex openly just as much as men are? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, because some women yes. still feel uncomfortable with talking about sex, and they think it's just a man's thing to talk about sex. Those are those. Those are your maturity level too. And I mean, some of those are the households you're having sex issues in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. Because yeah, if you're afraid to talk, talk about it, and you then you're afraid, afraid to talk to about it, it with yeah. your mate. Exactly. exactly. Or, or they may be embarrassed it. with their body or just another whatever. But if they were to enter that door, it would be a whole other discussion. So. Okay, so let me ask you this. That's why they're having the problem. They need to talk about it and do some of the things. Okay, exactly. and that brings up a good question. So should women talk to their spouse, their husband, yes. about what is right and yes. what is wrong yes i think so communication in a relationship is the key if you cannot be honest with that person that you with and talk to them about everything then you you don't need to be with them you need to be able to be open with them and express to them how you feel about everything no matter if it's sex religion right. political whatever right. it might be you should that should be your best friend that right. should be the person right. that you can go to and talk about anything to but the word isn't open the word is vulnerable when you're with the one that you love, that you're building a relationship with, mm -hmm. you're supposed to be vulnerable with them. That means you should be able to be comfortable being embarrassed by them, mm -hmm. you know, embarrassed with them, mm -hmm. crying with them, everything, the whole night. That's the only person that you can be that vulnerable with. But exactly. now, in honesty, vulnerability comes to some people, it comes off as weakness. So when it comes to relationship, because no. we're just talking open, there should be no weakness, no, you know, just be open and honest. Bad communication, yeah. bad communication is a weakness. Okay. Because with any man in a relationship, let's say, well, I don't want to talk about positions or anything like that, but let's say that man's wanting something. If it becomes a problem, he's going to eventually say something to you. Or you're either going to have sex less, or he's going to start to change his routine, this, another, whatever. But either way it goes, he is letting you know there's something he didn't like, something that you're not doing right, something he wants. There's something wrong. And so you got to be able to, to do the same. And so that's why, like you said, communication has got to be key. It's yeah, got I mean, to be open. Yeah. I mean, even if it means if it means I want my, my pinky toe sucked more. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? You got to say gotta specific. You, you, you gotta, ain't sucking it right. You need to suck that pinky exactly. toe Exactly. next time. Because it's just like with the laundry. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like with laundry yeah. and cooking and everything else. If he doesn't like salt, he's going to say, I don't like salt. If he mm -hmm. likes his toast barely brown, no rim. He's going to say that. That's okay, but let's be up. real about this here because y'all say be open and honest about yeah. this. So normally when a dude comes to a woman or like a woman goes to a guy and she's telling him, hey, you're not doing this or I would mm -hmm. like for you to do this here. Mm -hmm. They internalize it and make it personal and then they feel like, oh, I can't please him. Or that's, I, when that you, is, as usual, that's when you have to baby a man. It depends on your approach. You know, you know what I mean? Okay. You have to, it's the way anybody. I think anybody, anybody, any, anybody with this at this table. It depends on how you can take any. You can internalize any message depending mm -hmm. on how it's con delivered. delivered. How it's delivered. Yeah. yeah. How you and bring and you know, I've lived that. I mean, I've, I've, I'm married and divorced because of that. I, I I wasted 12 years in a situation where I babied a situation. Mm -hmm. And you've just got to come to the point where I mean, because I thought communication was great. But I was in that situation where the man was having the issue taking the fact that he was not doing what he was supposed to do. So at that point, it had to be, look, this, this isn't working because I'm asking for X, Y, Z, and you're not giving it, but you want me to give you what you want to receive. And yeah, stuff. it got to be there you go. reciprocated. There you go. Yeah, there you go. And the thing is, it didn't start out that way. Mm -hmm. But then that's a breakdown of communication. So that's a situation that can't be together because then it can't be one sided. It can't be. It can't be one sided. Both parties got to be able to, to give. Exactly. I mean, one can't just do it all. Exactly. And the other one, like, well, no, you just please me. Do what I No, you got to. Exactly. And it ain't 50 50. It's 100 100. Exactly. Both people got to exactly. give their all in exactly. it and try to make each other happy because exactly. it is somebody that you. Trying to learn to get used to you mm -hmm. living with them. I'll be married in July 20 years. Oh, wow. It has took 20. I mean, we had a good point, but in the beginning, yeah, it was rocky. It just takes time and maturity. Correct. You will mature. And yes, if in the beginning, I didn't talk. I closed up when I got mad at certain stuff. But I have learned now, don't do that because you won't get nothing solved. You have to be open and say what you feel. Okay. You have to communicate. Okay. You cannot just close up and not say nothing. If you don't like something, or you want something, or if he doing something wrong, or she doing something wrong, you got to tell him. Yeah, okay. you got to tell So, we, let's, let's go ahead and close this up. Anna, final words. Should women um, discuss sex? Absolutely. Right? I think so. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay, Everything. well, let's go ahead and move on to the next one. There you go. Y'all should keep on talking about it. <laughs> <laughs> but if you got a girlfriend you can't trust, don't My talk about it. Yeah. <laughs>
Yeah, sir. She's a hater. Yeah. <laughs> These questions are coming together great. So tell me, why can't women talk? What is the problem? I mean, a lot of women say that they can't talk to other women because they're either catty, they can't be trusted. Why? What has happened uh, down the line that makes some women feel that they can't talk to other women? I couldn't tell you. Because they've been hurt by somebody that they have confided in and told them everything and they have we ran and told everybody right. it's the guy back to you but it's the guy back to you the wrong way because you know if I tell Jim it's coming by the time Jimmy deliver it to you, it's gonna be totally different right. the way I told. Him. By the time you deliver it to Anna, it's gonna be totally different. So by the time it get back to me, it's gonna be messy and ugly. So I think people have women have just been hurt because they confide in somebody and that person just by the time so a lot of people you have to know who to talk to and who not to talk to too. And I think that's what my issue is. Every every woman you can't talk to. You cannot. You have to know who to talk to and who not to. I don't think it's so much as that because you don't experience that till later on in life. I think a lot of times with situations like that, that starts at home. Um, when, just like Anna was saying earlier where she had a curiosity and she couldn't go to those that were in her home. So a lot of times if there's a lot, if, if there's not conversation going on in the home freely, uh, you know, or you're not able to express certain things like that, then some, some people actually kind of grow up that way. You know what I'm saying? With that kind of shell. And then they kind of cleave to those people that are, are that way until they're exposed to someone mm -hmm. who's different, who, who freely speaks this, that, and other, whatever. Um, so I don't think it's always, you know, a situation where, you, where you're burnt. Um, but most time it is, you know, uh, and not necessarily just burnt where you've just basically given too much mm -hmm. um, to someone or put too much trust in a, yeah, certain, in a, in a situation. Trust, and like yeah. you said, something's got twisted or come back to you or whatever. Um, but like I said, a lot of times I think it starts, you know, much, much younger and how you start communicating, you know, even early on as in high school with girls and different things like that, you know what I'm saying? So, um, I mean, even for me, for instance, you know, I've always been a very energetic, outspoken, you know, very friendly person, you know, don't meet any stranger, whatever. But I always had issues regardless because I was always active, this, another, there would always be a circle that would have an issue with me and I wouldn't even know them. You know what I'm saying? And so when your personality intimidates people, when you immediately come into a room or whatever, you basically kind of just gain this, you know, oh, well, attitude. And that's what I've always done. So it took me to be 38 years old before I found girls that were girlfriends, women that I could call girlfriends and trust that way. Even, uh, you know, with my mom and my sister, uh, my sister and I didn't really have a close relationship like that where we could talk and discuss things like that. But... I grew up watching aunts and my mom them and different things like that and so on and so forth. But I was well, you know, like I said, you know, 38 years old before I found someone who was truly a girlfriend that I could consider a girlfriend that I could talk to about things uh, and, and vice versa, you know, or if she pissed me off, I could call and tell her you pissed me off and, you know, this, that, other, whatever, backwards and forth. But I didn't really find true girlfriends until I was 38 years old. But I think that was because of the experiences that I had you know, and not really having a lot of girlfriends, you know, growing up. So. Okay, mm -hmm. so would you say, just listening to both Veronica and Jimmy and you all, I know you said you really don't have, I mean, when we first initially, you didn't have really much to say about that. So do you think women are carrying baggage from relationship to relationship? So that's where this whole thing came from, women can't trust women? I mean, Could you're be. blaming all women mm -hmm. for something mm -hmm. that one woman Done to you. Could, so be. It's pretty, could, it's be. could be, okay, could be, could be, and you know, and like you said, even in your in your book, if I could say, uh, you know, like I said, it took me later on in life, but it's something I said, oh, you know, oh well, and I kept it moving. You've got some people that haven't forgiven themselves for whatever their situation was, yeah. you know, or they haven't men, you know, minutes and fists, or just basically said, you know, what it is, what it is, but I'm gonna start with today and make tomorrow better. And so you've got some people that are that are locked up in some old baggage. So. So, final word, Arnold, can women trust women? Uh, women Can women talk? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Run. I think they can. Yeah. Okay, Jimmy? I think, think I, so? I, yes. Yeah. Okay, so let's go ahead and go to the next one. Real good. Real good. Y'all knocking these out. <laughs> okay, real good. Does social media play a part in the divorce ep epidemic? And we're going to start with Jimmy, since you've been married. And you. I'm not going to say that it necessarily plays a part, um, because if you didn't have social media, since we're talking about divorce, we're talking about reasons couples split up, 
Um, we can't just say that. Um, you know, my ex-husband and I actually met in the office. We were really good friends. Um, I mean, really good friends, just friends originally. And so we met in the office. So, um, you know, I don't think social media has an issue to do with it because if a person is ready uh, to be on the out, they're ready to be on the out. So it doesn't matter if it's a strip club, if it's pornography, if it's someone at church, you know, whatever. If they're on the way out, they're on the way out, period, point blank. So, uh, you know, to say that social media, whether they're uh, playing uh, phone sex, got partners over the, you know, online, just another whatever, it, it, that person's mind is already, I was already made up. That's just another avenue, just like every, any and everything else. Because if that's the case, then you can talk about their cell phone. Because whatever they want to do is right at their, their hip or their hand 24-7, even, you know, when they're not on social media. So, I mean, it could probably play a part as far as distraction. But I think when it comes to divorce, anything's going to work that two people want to work. And so you can't blame social media for it. So. I agree. I think it's just yeah. another vehicle. I think if they want to do it, a man's going to always do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, I don't think it is. It's something else. That's, and social media is just, you know, my new. I don't think it has to be something else major in there to make them want to get a divorce and not to be together. I don't think social media would. And I think some people go too far as posting too much, too many things about their relationship on social media. And that could probably play a big part with, well, you said this, I read this. Now, you might need to pull back on some of those things that you might say, but I don't think social media is the reason why you get a divorce. Yeah, and you still can't say that because just like you're posting online, you're texting, you could be texting the same thing, you could be talking to people about the same thing, this, another, whatever. If you're wanting to be together, it's it's gonna be love that that is yeah, what you what you be, exactly that's yeah. what you're gonna that's gonna use to rekindle you mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying or get counseling or whatever but social media that's just an excuse somebody yeah. said that it's yeah, just yeah, an excuse okay. exactly. yeah it's something deeper. An excuse it's something deeper. okay yeah. Anna, let's go and go to the next one then put in the work <laughs> put in the work you got to you know, put, put in the work put in the work whoa real good one I don't know y'all pulling these questions like <laughs> one after another. <laughs> okay, recently, um, I think it was Mayor Mayor. Y'all may have heard about that, and I think it's Tina. Um, Mayor yes. Mayor is the yes. gospel group or whatever. Yes. And on the episode, her husband supposedly, I haven't seen it, but supposedly her husband cheats on her. Correct. Mm -hmm. And uh, she recently did an interview. There is an article out there. And in her interview, she pretty much kind of like, in a way, accept responsibility for him cheating on her. Is let me get this because let me make sure I'm reading this question right. Are women responsible if their husband cheat? And we're gonna start with you, Veronica, because you're married. Um, I'm gonna say no, because for the simple reason, um, you take it back and off of that with that mirror mirror situation. I did read articles where she said that she was she took full responsibility for him. She and I don't think she should take full responsibility. It might be some things that she did in the relationship to make him be like, oh, you know, my nerves, da, da, da. But for him to go out and cheat and go out there and sleep around with somebody else, no, it's, it's, I don't think that's the one response. I don't think you should take full responsibility for that. That's just him pleasuring himself. He did that for just selfish own game that had nothing to do with her because if it's that bad where you have to go out and see somebody you i mean why can't you just talk to that person and just tell that person hey you're doing this you're doing that i mean i'm unhappy with this i'm unhappy with that if y'all can't work it out well then yeah y'all go y'all separate ways or whatever but for him to go out there and sleep around on her no i don't think she should take responsibility for him sleeping around on her okay so you no. need one no. Yeah, anyone. No, no. 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 cause he just satisfied his own self. He not. He, he trying to make her think it was his fault. It was her fault. The reason why he went out and did that. But no, she don't need to take responsibility and say no. I was the reason why he went out there and slept around. No, that's not your fault. Okay, Jamie. In the situation where you just said that, you said when you said any woman, you could think of a situation where maybe if the lady slept around, then the guy felt like he had a right to. I still don't think so. I feel like this, once a cheater, always a cheater. If you're gonna be one to cheat, it's in your spirit to cheat, period, point blank. Because anything that you want, anything that's worth working for, you're going to work for it. You are. And so, like you said, if there was an issue or a problem, another, I, what, I have a, what I have an issue with, with that, with the husband situation is, 
is that surely he wasn't using the fact that she's traveling and on the road as an excuse. Okay. Because you, she been doing it. Right. And yeah. you too are a gospel artist. Mm -hmm. And you guys have a family. You have lots of children. Mm -hmm. So there's nothing stopping you from getting on a plane and jetting to where your wife is and mm -hmm. vice versa. You do what you mm -hmm. got to do to make it work. Period. Mm -hmm. Point blank. It's all business expense anyway. Exactly. So I feel like once you're a cheater, you're always a cheater regardless. And if there's something not going on at the house, like I said, that's the time for communication. Yeah. But if you step yeah. outside yeah. of the marriage, you stepped out because you wanted to truly step out mm -hmm. and you truly wanted to disrespect the situation. You did. Period. Point blank. Okay. And you disrespected to the point where you stepped out there, you could have brought me back something. So you weren't even thinking about me. I could, well, you brought me back something. You brought me back heartache. Period. Point yeah, point. you did. Because you, you brushed me. Back me you told me yeah. up. And it's going to be hard for me to get over that mentally. Because you did me like that. So, but yeah. And then you got to think about that too. You affected me with the things that you out there doing in the world. Because if you bring me something back deadly, I got to live with that. So yeah, no. Don't do that with me. <laughs> I agree. I think that you need to man up. And address the issue and then if it's not resolved then you need to decide to leave but i think every man they, any, anybody should be responsible for their own action. okay yeah. so because okay so by her taking that okay because a lot of women i mean does that mean indirectly maybe she has like low self-esteem or or is she just crazy if she's blaming herself i think so anybody that would blame themselves well, and I think what it is, is she's probably just at the time, because it all happened, you know, I guess so quickly, and, and uh, watching it, because I do watch it, I love the show. I do too, because I, I love it. I think what happened was, because she didn't even really initially go in to talk about that. Yeah. Um, it was a last minute decision, and so in her healing, I think she, she, she decided to talk about it, and I think placing the blame on herself was probably just a moment of stress. You know what I'm saying? Just, 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 just a simple moment of stress because here she's having issues with the group, whether she should stay. Um, they're having issues with management, this, another, whatever. So she's probably thinking that because she's committed to marry, marry the group, that she's taken away from her family. But what she does is marry, marry the group supports the family. It, do, that's it feeds child. the family. Exactly. And, and she's been doing yeah. that for 12 years. She was traveling 12 years ago. So what, why are you going to take it these last few years you want to go out and treat? She's been but, doing that okay, for a child. Let's take him out of this whole equation. Let's because he did what he did. Exactly. He okay. did what he did. We we all agree that he should own up to that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But why do you think she is taking responsibility? Because in a way that sounds ludicrous for a woman to I say. I think she's not obvious. I, it doesn't sound like she's in her right mind. And I don't know. I don't want to keep up with the show. But I have. But and we're, we're not even talking about her. Just, yeah. Just, yeah. Just, just, yeah. Just, yeah. Just, yeah. Just, yeah. Just, yeah. Just, that go through a roller coaster of emotion. I had yeah. a friend that whose husband said, you know, you never cleaned up and that's why, you know, I couldn't stick around, I started losing interest, et cetera, et cetera. And, Lies and you, exactly. Yeah. You're just blaming anything at that point. You're just, <laughs> really yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I think when sometimes when you take a full responsibility, I think you just trying to cover up the fact and you trying to give justification to somebody on the reason why you stand. Why you stand? Yeah. Mm -hmm. you're, you're trying to make somebody else feel like, oh, so you know stand. what, I was doing this. I was doing that. It's my it's my fault the reason mm -hmm. why he did that because I wasn't even doing this for him. You just saying that because you want to stay and so that's why you saying it's my fault. No, if you want to stay, you just want to stay. Right. But don't it's take it like and that. say it's why my fault right. for exactly. him to go out there and do that. Yeah, I'm just you. saying. Because that's your life. You don't have to, I don't have to answer to Anna the reason why I want to stay with whoever I stay. You with right. my uh, husband. Correct. If he go out and cheat to do something, it, I don't have to say, I'm just yeah. staying with him, girl, because, oh, it was my fault. So I did all that. Earlier, y'all said the man needs to man up. Does she, the woman, and we're not talking about Tina, just any woman, if yeah. you decide to stay, should you just man up and say, I, I just want to stay? I just want to stay. He yeah. no good. He, he, yeah. he ain't right here. Well, I, I, I want to stay. stay. Yeah, 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 I just yeah. want to stay. In his moment of weakness, basically, yeah, you're yeah. saying you're forgiving him for that foolishness and you're going to stay. And I need to so much yeah. that I'm forgiving him for this right. situation. I just well, you want to have to, yeah. yeah, well, that's the truth. I'm I'm just just Guess I'm what? Saying. I ain't her. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to have to forgive you to stay. Yeah. I'm going to have to forgive you to stay. Because if not, every day I roll over, I'm going to bust you a yeah. time. Well, yeah, I'm going to have to be the forgiving you to stay. Yeah. I'm going to have 
I can forgive you because that's gonna mess with my insecurity, you know what I'm saying? my mental no, state. I, here. I mean, you you don't no. really you gonna have, have to me wondering what was it? Uh, no, I, I mean, so now yeah. I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to forgive you wholeheartedly for me yeah. to say I'm not gonna stay just because yeah. I want a man. Yeah. No. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank y'all, ladies. <laughs> this has been really good. I'm gonna have to you know. definitely that four one k and all that for I made it cheap. <laughs> Is it cheaper to keep right? <laughs> yeah, it just might be. You know, oh, them two incomes felt it that one. Right. So. Well, thank y'all for coming to the true bowl. That is a wrap. Thank y'all for that. Was good. That was good. What y'all think? That was great. Yeah, Questions are awesome. I've seen a lot of things I've seen things That I've never thought Or could ever dream But there is one thing One thing I haven't seen, I've never, ever, never, ever seen God.